All right. Hey, everybody. Misty Williams here, founder of Healing Rosie. And I'm super excited to have my friend Lloyd with me today. You guys have been in the Healing Rosie Facebook group or paying attention to any of our social feeds. You know that we're going to talk to Lloyd Burrell today about EMFs. And if you've been around our community for any length of time or just spent time in the health space overall, you know that Lloyd has been such a pioneer in helping all of us to become educated about the dangers of EMFs but not just talking about the dangers, but what we need to know is what to do about it. What do we need to do if we are in a situation where we're exposed to really high levels of uh, electromagnetic radiation and other kinds of EMFs? And we're going to talk about that today with Lloyd, and you're going to want to take some notes. I'm sure we're going to cover some good stuff and tell you about Lloyd's new program. So welcome, Lloyd. Thank you, Misty. It's great to be here. Well, I'm super excited for you to be here. And um, for those of you who are paying attention, Lloyd is also a guest on your best sleep ever coming up um, in March. And we're going to kind of give you an appetizer today. And in the conversation that we have in your best sleep ever, we're going to go into more detail about some of the things we're going to cover during this uh, Facebook live. So if this is intriguing to you, you can definitely learn more by um, signing up for that event. Um, but Lloyd, why don't you start off by just giving us a little bit of background. You have quite the story with EMFs yourself, and you were kind of confronting this EMF challenge before anybody knew it was a challenge. That is exactly it. Yeah. 2002, I said my phone one day and um, my life changed forever from that point forward. And it wasn't because of I got some devastated news, a dog had died or anything like that. It was just something rather bizarre happened that I began to react to my cell phone. Um, began to just feel a little bit disoriented initially, not quite sure what was going on. And it went from being um, strange to unpleasant to unbearable in a very, very short period of time, literally in a few uh, telephone conversations, people were calling me because I was running a rental business. So I wasn't like I would kept calling people out. They were calling in. I just kept answering, not like repeatedly even. And um, so initially it was a kind of a brain fog and then it just developed into this very um, intense pain on the side of my head where I was holding the cell phone and literally after only a few calls, it just became uh, unbearable, just a very intense, what I now call hot ear, <laughs> um, and uh, kind of a burning up all the side of the, the head. And um, that those symptoms kind of progressed so there's the immediate symptoms of what I was feeling when I put the cell phone. And then over time, um, again, a very short time, those symptoms progressed and into i just became like um a shadow of my former self um and literally actually one of the things that was most troubling or one of the things one of the areas of my life which, which was most impacted was my sleep because i could just go to bed and sleep and i was actually it wasn't that i couldn't fall to sleep or it was that i was going to bed and i was not recovering so i was kind of sleeping I was doing everything I could and yet somehow I was getting up and I was feeling more tired than ever and um, that plus a whole load of other very unpleasant symptoms um, all kinds of aches and pains digestive problems uh, it just really I was in a mess and that lasted for pretty much two years because the doctors they didn't have a clue to be honest um, they couldn't find anything wrong with me and kind of put two and two together and it took me 10 years uh cut a long story very very short <laughs> uh to figure myself figure figure a way out of this of that hole i kind of dug for myself but there really was no information out there and that's why i'm talking about this and that's why i created my website electricsense.com that's why i've written a book which has just been published on this to get the information out about the dangers and above all above all share the solutions. Yeah. Well, this is a topic that gets brought up a lot um, as we're having conversations about all sorts of different health conditions, because 
it seems that um, there's an intersection between how the body functions um, and how our cells are designed to work and what's happening with EMFs. And, you know, we all know if we think back to like, you know, science class in high school, even that our bodies are electric, uh, we're electrical beings and, you know, water is really important to our body functioning well, because it's conducting that electricity. And of course it just logical that, you know, there's a way that nature desi designed our bodies to work. Our cells are governed by electrical impulses. You know, we are, we are tied to the, you know, the Schumann's residence, the way the earth pulsates, you know, really um, helps our cells to function properly. And when we have all this interference in our environment, um, chaos seems inevitable. And I think it would be really helpful for you to help people understand how these EMFs are um, causing dissonance in the body and uh, disruption that could be responsible for some of the conditions and symptoms they're experiencing. Yeah, you know, we don't talk about it a lot, but we are kind of governed by frequencies. And it's true what you said, we are, we are um, electromagnetic beings, our cells, you know, the building blocks of our bodies um, are communicating uh, electrically, electromagnetically, very, but at very, very subtle levels. And what EMFs do, so EMFs, my definition, electromagnetic fields, some people call it electromagnetic radiation. And really what I'm talking about is all these frequencies from different devices, which are, we're all using willy nearly. So it's not just the, the cell phone, but it's, it's um, more and more wireless. Obviously that is a biggie because it's just exploded. But it's not even just wireless, it's wired as well. It's what we've got in our homes and things like um, dirty electricity, which we've got in our homes. And there is just so much science behind this, Misty. Uh, it really is, um, these frequencies impact us in so many ways, uh, but at a cellular level, certainly um, there's a lot of science behind the impact on the cell membranes and on what we call what's called as voltage gated calcium channels. And so this uh, interaction, this because uh, this is there's an interaction going on all the time. Your cells are, you know, we're living, breathing beings. But at a cellular level, there's um, electrical and uh, chemical interactions. And those are intertwined, obviously. And one of the things that the science shows very quickly, uh, clearly is this um, hardening of the cell membrane, which um, kind of leads to premature aging, um, free radicals, oxidation, um, DNA damage, um, mitochondria damage, uh, blood brain barrier damage. We've got this uh, protection, uh, protective um, uh, protection around the, around the brain. Um, and that is impacted letting toxins in, uh, all kinds of toxins into the brain and obviously links with um, all kinds of cancers, notably uh, brain cancers, but not just brain cancers, schwannomas. Um, there is so much, so much science on this and big, big studies. People are always, people saying, yeah, there's not much science, there's not much, stuff, but there is, there is a lot of science on it. Of course, we'd like more, but there's, more than enough to take action that's the important thing and it's so it's these how it, it's impacting us at this cellular level and that's all well and good but really what people need to understand is it's this link to disease this is the gateway to disease or dis-ease as i like to call it um and we're talking yeah the the you know cancer alzheimer's Parkinson's, so many neurological uh, disorders. Um, and really, pretty much, if you look at all the diseases of the 20th or 21st century, then they're all on there. They're all, you know, all linked to uh, EMF exposures. In fact, there's hardly anything which isn't. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about some things we can do because um, it can be alarming to really start wrapping your head around this and realize that, you know, we're in environments where we're bathed in this radiation. It's not just, you know, the wiring in our homes, which obviously 
um, is EMFs, but it, there's Bluetooth and cell signals and so many, I mean, we're all like right now, you and I are talking to each other through a computer and, you know, it's like, how do we function in the modern world without technology? So I'd love for you just to kind of give people a glimpse mm. into some of the things they can do to empower themselves. Right. And obviously we cannot function. We can choose to live our lives any way we want. That's, that's the first thing. So we, we can, you can choose to go that route to not have any technology, but that's not what I'm suggesting. And, you know, the, the cell towers and, and, and this rather wonderful technology, because it is wonderful in so many ways, is here to stay. So I'm not saying, um, you know, that we should banish all that. Uh, it's about using this in technology intelligently. And to use it intelligently, you need to, you need to understand the dangers, because otherwise what I'm saying is it's like going in here and it's going out here. Um, so, and obviously that's the, the, that is a, a big question and there's a lot, the, the, you need to spend a little bit of time on this uh, subject, yeah. but some, um, you know, there's some really simple things you can do. And I always talk about how you can use a cell phone. I don't own a cell phone, uh, but the, it, pretty much everybody's got a cell phone. So it's, well, how can we use a cell phone? Um, how can we make a cell phone safe? There's only one way I know to make a cell phone completely safe, and that's to not use it, unfortunately. <laughs> so how can we make a cell phone safer? Um, and we can make it so much safer just by increasing the distance between the cell phone and yourself. And, um, you know, just, incre just increasing the distance by a few millimeters, just holding it a few millimeters away, can literally reduce your exposure by thousands of times, thousands of times, because EMFs uh, work in a non-linear uh, manner, they work in an exponential manner. So there is, what I'm saying here is, there's little things you can do which can pack a big punch. And that's one of them is to increase the distance. I recommend not putting the cell phone next to your head at all, if you can really, and it is not that difficult the free way of doing that is to use the, the speakerphone function. Um, that's okay so far if, if you're happy with everybody listening to what you're saying. Uh, but if you want to go a bit further and it's not a big investment, maybe $20, $30, and you buy an air tube headset, don't use a wired headset because the wired headset, the problem is there that the wire can act like a, an antenna and uh, amplify this um, radiating effect of all the ambient EMFs uh, that are around you. So an air tube headset, that's the recommendation. Slight trade off with the sound quality, although they are getting pretty good. Yeah, so um, that that's uh, an easy thing you can do. And then beyond that, um, text don't talk. Don't text like crazy either, because that's not good. You know, I've got thousands of testimonials, people that have written into me, you can see it on my website, it's all there, electricsense.com, saying, you know, uh, different ways that EMFs are affecting them. And one of them is by holding the cell phone that pe people are reporting that they're getting the prickly skin, the kind of thing that I had, or the hot hand. <laughs> You've got mm -hmm. the hot ear and the hot yeah. hand. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's for the cell phone. And uh, I can give you a quick recommendation on the Wi-Fi if you would like. So, Please. Yeah. Uh, if we've got time. Uh, so for Wi-Fi, obviously, I prefer to go wired. So here I am. You can see I've got this wire dangling. And all this, what I'm using here, this laptop, um, is it's all wired. There's nothing wireless here at all. So I have a... Uh, it's actually a Wi-Fi modem router, but it's got a button on it, and I switch off the Wi-Fi. Um, and um, so there is no there is no Wi-Fi here. Um, and you can also that, switch off the Bluetooth. You can also and that sure, one switch. snuck up on me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And um, so the thing is, <clears throat> if you can, then you always go for the wired. Remember when you go for the wired to switch off also on the settings on the computer because people think oh well i plugged it in so that's it no more wireless no <laughs> you need to switch off on the computer deactivate on the computer the bluetooth and the the, the wi-fi and 
if you're not ready to take that step, or I know it's not always easy to go fully hardwired to use what we call an Ethernet cable, um, then at least switch it off at night. Switch it because who needs Wi-Fi at night when they sleep when they're sleeping, yeah. And um, if you want to go a step further, like a $10 solution, is to use a little mechanical timer. And you plug that in first, and then you plug the modem router into that, and you set it so it switches off at night. Why do I say buy that little thing? Because you can actually go into the settings, most probably. But the problem is these devices, they get regular updates. And when they get the updates, then they Reset. go back to the default setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a really cheap, easy way of significantly, again, why is it important? You know why it's important, because mm -hmm. we're trying to reduce these EMF exposures. Above all, if there's any time we want to do it, it's when we sleep. It's super yeah. important is to do yeah. it when we sleep because the uh, EMFs are impacting us. It's like trying to sleep in broad daylight. Um, and that's how our brain is picking this up. The penal gland, that's what it's, that's the message it's getting, uh, that, we're, the, that we're getting light and uh, that we shouldn't be sleeping, that we should be awake. And that's messing up the whole hormone uh, regulation. So mm -hmm. yeah, just some very simple things you can do there. Yeah. Well, you have actually been putting a lot of work into compiling resources to give us kind of a, I guess, a masterclass on EMFs and what we can do to make our environment safer. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I have. So it's a it's a package, uh, which uh, the backbone of the package is obviously the book, uh, which took me most of last year to write. Drove me crazy. <laughs> I'm not an author, but it had to be written. And I've, you know, um, I've learned a lot myself, but I've learned a lot also by interviewing experts. And I've uh, interviewed pretty much everyone and every, any, everybody that knows all the, all the top experts, let me say, on this question. Um, and this, uh, I've brought all this information together and uh, in a, put it in a form which is uh, easily consumed, hopefully, um, with a lot of practical tips and a lot of science, over 500 references. Um, so, and one of the reasons I did that is because so many people don't believe this. So I made sure that what I was saying, you know, there was no mistake and that people could, if, if, because uh, what if you, if you buy it, um, as a, as a package, which I'll explain to you, then you've got the clickable links, for instance, but the references are all in there. And um, so you can, you know, you can, you can, if you want to go into an argument about this, you've got some serious arguments to share. Uh, it's all there. Uh, so there's a book, 260 pages, 500 references. Um, and then there is a four part webinar series, which is um, really to make all this even more usable, all this information, because it is complex. Um, and looking at um, really all the different aspects of how EMFs, in the main aspects of how uh, EMFs impact us and what you can do uh, in terms of these uh, four categories, elect, uh, radio frequency radiation, which is all the wireless, electric fields, which is uh, what we found on the wiring, magnetic fields too, and dirty electricity, which is also uh, what we find on the wiring. So wired and wireless, looking at all of all of those, the many different ways that these frequencies impact our health and the many things we can do, ranging from free and easy to intermediate to advanced, if you want to go into the shielding, if you want to use an EMF meter, um, which I do really recommend. It's not as frightening as it might seem uh, initially. Um, and yeah, it's a whole package with, uh, with those two main elements and some other goodies thrown in, uh, podcast, uh, um, um, a contribution from um, Camilla Reese, um, who's done some brilliant work also in this area. Um, and also another ebook which I wrote, which is actually my first ebook, which um, is how to be electrical sensitivity, because this is one of those strange things, which it's like, doesn't most people are kind of thinking it's not a problem because I can't feel anything. But then believe me, the day you do begin to feel something, then that's the book that you need to be able to 
deal with that and uh, recover your health, hopefully. Yeah. And it is, yeah. yeah, tough. It can be tough. Well, this is a tricky area because EMF sensitivity isn't something that you can necessarily detect by running labs or, you know, doing a 24 hour urine test or something like that. It's more yes, how it affects the body and you know, certainly we see the outcomes of, of EMFs, but science doesn't always do the best job of tying it back. So it's wonderful, Lloyd, that you've put this all together to make it easy. It can be very daunting. I remember when I first confronted all of this back in 2012 and started learning about EMFs and it was very, very hard back then to find any information on what to do and, you know, how to, how to make your home safer. So thank you for the amazing work that you're doing and the resources you're putting together to make this easier for us. Um, and I encourage, yeah, I encourage all of you guys, if this is resonating for you and you know, deep down that you need to do something to make your home safer for yourself, for the, for your husband, your wives, your kids, the people that are coming to visit anyone that you love, um, highly recommend Lloyd and his work and, um, getting educated yourself so that you can take control in your own hands. So thanks so much, Lloyd, for stopping by and sharing with us today. Thank you, Misty. Thank you so much. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.